The saying goes, someone who loves you wouldn't put themselves in a position to lose you. Seems simple enough. On today's case, Ms. Poplin says her boyfriend, Mr. Blunt's actions, have her feeling like the only position for him is to be evicted from their home. Sneakily coming home with barbecue sauce lips, suspect hair accessories found in his car, and a series of unconvincing excuses have Ms. Poplin ready to call it quits. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Pomplin versus Blunt. Thank you very much, Ms. Pomplin, Mr. Blunt. Ms. Pomplin, you say that you no longer can trust Mr. Blunt. His blatant disregard for your feelings have left you sour. You want to end this relationship and you want him to move out of the house. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Blunt, you say all the animosity and cheating accusations from Ms. Pomplin have taken its toll on your relationship and your hope is to fix those issues to reestablish the connection. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Pomplin, what brings us to divorce court today? Your Honor, I am here today to end my relationship with Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I am over his lying, his sneaking around, and constantly pressuring me to have babies. I want out of this relationship, I want out of the timeshare he forced me to purchase with him, and I want him out of my house. So that sounds like you are done, Ms. Pomplin. Correct. Mr. Blunt, did you hear what Ms. Pomplin said? I did. And what say you, sir? Well, um, personally, I thought things were going great up until maybe about a year ago. Um, I know she still loves me, and I love her. And, um, like I said, we work well together, but, um, she has some issues that, um, that we don't communicate as well as we should to a shit about. But, um, the issues that she thinks that we have, we don't actually have. So you think they can be resolved? Absolutely, yes, well, ma'am. Ms. Pomplin, I'm going to take you back a little bit. Tell me a little bit about how you all met and what has led us to this position. So it all started, I, me and my girlfriends, we go to bingo night every Wednesday at this <laughs> hole in the bar, a hole in the wall bar. My sister loves bingo oh, night also. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. But we go every weekend and this week we were doing awesome. We were all hitting, we were having a great time. I won these really cool like gaming headphones and everybody tried to buy them off of me. The whole, like all the guys at the bar were like, Awesome. I understand. I read in my papers, you're a gamer. I am. And you actually make a living at it. You're one of these people... I do. ...that people want to see yeah. do their games, right? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, so, well, most guys see me and they don't assume I'm a gamer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was outside and Jimmy came up to me and I instantly was like, no, no, you're not getting them. I don't want anything to do with you. And he just kind of was like, what makes you think I wanted those? And I said, well, you can have my number and gave him my number. He texted me later that night and it just kind of took off from there. We started seeing each other, meeting up at Bingo every week until finally we decided to take things serious. And then, gosh, months, six months later, he ended up moving in with me and my son mm -hmm. and... And you have a teenage son. I do. Um, how old is he now? He's 17. So is he a rising senior, meaning he'll yeah. be senior next year? Yeah. So something tells me you're looking forward to the time when he is a uh, rising freshman going right. to a college. Yes. Uh, somewhere that. outside of your house. Right. <laughs> okay? Because it'll be time for you to hang up the mommy shoes, exactly. correct? But, Mr. Mr. Blunt? Yes, ma'am. Uh, something tells me you want a little bit of a different relationship. Is that right? Well, um... Not just me, but my, my mom and her mom have been asking me a lot about, my mom especially, about grandkids. But um, even though I already have children, you know, it's been a while since we had a baby in the family. And um, they kind of got baby fever, fever. My sisters are having babies um, kind of recently. So um, she was asking me, you know, and me and Ashley talked about this, but... Um, uh, Ms. Poplin is shaking her head like yeah. not happening. No, yeah. he knew from day one that I did not that want anymore. That's not the truth, Your Honor. I... When we first met, she did not say that. We even talked about baby names, what our child would look like together, all that type of stuff. Ashley, that was I... all just speculation. Like, oh yeah, we'd have a cute baby, but he knew I did not want a baby. My son is about to be 18. I spent my whole, I had him when I was 17. I spent my whole life being a mom, and I love it. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to start over again, and he's known that. Mm -hmm. And so, for, for, for you, the store is closed. Yeah. On that. 
And throughout your relationship, have you taken the necessary precautions to make sure you don't have a baby? Yeah, I am on birth control. I make him use condoms. I'm just very, very safe about it. Mr. Blunt? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Pompa don't want no baby. I see. We she doing everything she need to do to make sure, because you know I have people come in divorce court all the time, and I hear, and quote, she had a baby on me, or it was a one-time thing, and she got pregnant. Nuh-uh. If a woman does not want to be pregnant, unless something drastic happens, yeah. she knows exactly what she can do to try to prevent it. Am I right, Ms. Pompey? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then on top of that, he's been hiding my birth control. Oh, my goodness. Here we go with this one. So okay. I am very, very consistent about Actually, where I, I put I my birth not, control. I did not hide your birth control. You know sometimes you get forgetful and you move, you move too fast sometimes. You all have been having this baby conversation for a while and I can guarantee you she know where she put her birth control. Right. Okay. Every day, same place. Well, why would I hide her birth control? Because you're trying to get her, for her to miss a day so she'd be off the cycle. But, Your Honor, so I, don't, that... I don't want to do it that way, Your Honor. I'm not trying to do it that way. No, man. If, if that's what she says, I respect her wishes. We even talked about adopting if it was something that we really wanted to do as far as having a child together. So I'm, I'm with that. Like well, I said, the issues she said we have, they can be resolved. You even... He blamed my son, said maybe my son moved my birth control. Well, my I'm, son has his own bathroom. Well, he does his own thing. He would never touch my medication. So I decided this night that I was going to attempt to make his favorite meal, right? I got all the fix in. He was out seeing his kids. And he comes home covered in barbecue sauce. Like, he literally just ate with his children and his baby mama. And when I confronted him, he said, oh, it must have been from lunch. So it's very clear that this is something that we are not going well, to ever be on the same page no, about. No, two weeks later, it was right back where I, I usually put it. And I took them and put them somewhere, right? No. How did they show back up? Because you knew you didn't move it. Right. I didn't, I didn't, I knew I didn't move them. That's why I said maybe her Okay, son. well, the birth control fairies came in and they moved the birth control. Right. And then they came back, just like the tooth fairy, <laughs> and they put them back. And all is back right with right. your world because mm -hmm. you still don't want a baby. No, no. Okay. So, like, if... like he said about the adoption, I, he's right. I have said that because I don't want a baby. I don't want to start over. But I said that I would be open to adopting older children, fostering older children or something like that. And, like, I would be okay with that if he got a vasectomy. No, I did not. We had this conversation, but I never agreed to get a vasectomy, Ashley. You know I did not. Sounds well, he good. He already has right, eight kids, good. so we don't need any more to begin with. You have eight children? Yeah, I'm trying to hit ten, Miss. Oh, man. You ready? I mean, I, I mean, are you Jeff Bezos? You got that kind of money? Because uh, I'm going to tell you, kids way. cost a lot. I'm right. I'm hoping to get that. But I love children, and I love Ashley, though, and that's something that, you know, we... We did talk about it, you know, a few times about sharing that as, you know, a couple and maybe starting our own families. So. so this is not going to ever be a meeting of the minds, as we like to say in court? No, nope. probably So baby ixnay on the AB yeah. Bay yeah. is not going to happen. Yeah, no. no. So, um, Ms. Pomplin, knowing that, you still say there's some sneakiness going on. I want to have a real example because Mr. Blunt says these are issues that can be resolved. <sighs> okay, so... I love to cook, but I'm probably not the greatest cook, and he always talks smack about my cooking. So I decided this night that I was going to attempt to make his favorite meal, right? I got all the fix in. He was out seeing his kids and spending the day. He knew that I was doing this for him, and he comes home covered in barbecue sauce. Like, he literally just ate with his children and his baby mama. And when I confronted him, he said, oh, it must have been from lunch. Well, who walks around with barbecue oh, sauce? Oh, Honestly, that, Honestly, that doesn't even make sense. Just don't don't let her fool you because she's pretty and she's short and she's convincing. Don't let her um, try to convince. But wait a minute. The whole issue is not how much barbecue sauce you had on, but the but fact on is on my face all day. I know, but but you but here's the thing. She says you had just eaten when you knew that y'all had plans for a dinner together. So. But then he lied about it. Like, well, said he no, didn't eat. Yeah, well, no, Your Honor, this is, I, I didn't eat because it was a function for one of my children. My kid's mom had cooked, and I tasted some of the food, but I didn't eat because it was good. It smelled great. It was grilled food. I love grilled food, but I didn't eat. 
But why not just tell the truth? Why not say it was... <laughs> what you just said was very reasonable. It was a function for my child. And um, the, the, my son's mom cooked, so I had something to eat. But that doesn't mean I'm not hungry, babe. And we can sit out and have it. You can say that. Bit. But why, why would y'all avoid that communication? Excuse me, Your Honor. She didn't even know if I ate because when I came home, the plate that she made was just in the microwave, and I even tried to talk Because to you her. were late. The food was cooked and it was getting cold. So it just sounds like you all are really having yeah. a lack of communication. Yeah. Where is that coming from, Ms. Pompa? <laughs> Not me, because I talk and tell him how I feel all the time. It's the, when I tell him something's wrong, it's, oh, no, you're wrong. I'm not, I'm fine. Like, you're overreacting. I don't want to talk about this. We're done. Like, the amount of times that he just walks away from me having a problem, it's, there is no communication. One of my girlfriends, had, like, has a friend that has a lie detector test. I did not Yes, you did. It. You agreed to it. You... Oh, no, wait. He said, sounds good. Sounds good. Why do you need a lie detector test right, in a relationship? If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Mr. Blunt, you said that you want to be able to fix the relationship. Yes, Why do you think there's been a communication breakdown? I spend most of my time working. Um, Meaning outside of the home. Yeah, long shifts, and um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to start my own business, record label with some of my friends. And um, outside of that, I have been having opportunities to do some pretty cool stuff lately. So, you know, lately I haven't been spending as much time with her that I usually would. So, is, you know, is that what the problem is, Ms. Poplin? You feel like you're in a relationship alone? Yeah, well, and like, like he says, he does work a lot, but it's to the point where I feel like he's not just working. You think he's cheating? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because well, he'll be gone for hours. He usually gets off at 5. He won't roll in until, like, 8 or 9. So one day he got home late, and he was, like, in the bathroom taking a shower, and I just had this, like, feeling. Okay, and spidey I, sense. Right, a little spidey sense. Here we go. So I went into his car and was putzing around and found a bright pink hair scrunchie. Now, never in my life would I wear a pink hair scrunchie. So you do know I have children, though, right? And some of my children are daughters. You know that, right? So, Sometimes I take them to school, hair gets done in the car, you know, regular dad stuff. You know, I'm a father. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. Ms. Pompon, what makes you not trust him? What has happened? It's just a lot of the not answering goes. So, <laughs> so he went on vacation. He started this whole, like, four-wheeling club with a bunch of guys and... At first, it started fun. Like, I was excited for him to actually have a hobby and, like, go out with some guys. You know, they would go on little vacations, mm -hmm. out mudding, doing, you know, their guy thing. It was great. Until one time, they went out, and they were just, like, renting hotel rooms. They had two rooms between, like, the four of them. They each split it or whatever. And I'm just kind of, like, putzing around in bed one night, and I get this email from my, the timeshare thanking me for using points. Okay. And I was like, what? So his excuse was he got into a fight with one of his friends and wanted to get his own room. But why wouldn't you just go stay in the other room? There's, you guys have two rooms, switch with one of the guys from that room. Just, it's not mm -hmm. that hard. Why use the points? Like, it, it just felt... It made, you, it made you feel some kind of like way. Like, he went and got some lady to go stay in a hotel room because there's no reason for him to spend that money when there's another room. But, Ms. Pomlin, I keep going back to my original question. Something must have happened to make you not trust him because this, these are the kinds of kind of nitpicky mm -hmm. um, problems that come from somebody having violated trust. Yeah. Why don't you trust him? So, one of my girlfriends actually had, like, has a friend that has a lie detector test. The polygraph expert? Yes. So, I thought, peace of mind, I can be able to trust him if he does the lie detector test. Few questions, have you cheated on me, any of that, you know? Dang, Miss Pompley, if you got to right. put somebody on the box to be in a relationship, because that's what we used to call it as a prosecutor, put you on the box, 
That's a real lack of trust. Did he take the lie detector test? No, he agreed to it, right? He agreed to it. I pe paid the $700. I did not agree, I did not yes, agree to it. you this. did. You agreed to it. You, oh, no, wait, he said, sounds good. Sounds good. Why do you need a lie detector test right, in a relationship? Right. No. This is not a murder trial. No, it's not. Man. We are we are in a relationship, okay? Let me just let's let's just cut to the chase because these are the times where you ask really hard questions. Do you want to be in this relationship or are you over it? I'm over it. I'm done. That's really what the issue is. These little nitpicky things is really her way of saying, I don't want to put any more effort into this relationship. I get it. Mr. Blunt, that's what this is about. Yeah, no. So you all need to figure out how to, as Gwyneth Paltrow says, consciously uncouple. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay. it's going to be hard with that the timeshare because I can't afford to get out of that timeshare. It was his idea. I'm paying every month. And he stopped paying the monthly ones about three months ago. I've been having to pay all Mr. Blunt, Ryan, why, why, why are you not following through with an agreement that you all made, a uh, legally binding financial agreement? Now, that's not right. That's true. Yes, Your Honor, you're absolutely correct. Um, I have been living up to my end of the bargain up until, like she said, a few months ago because um, it was just a little bit... The, my finances were tight. Um, but you... That puts her in a bind. She also doesn't understand as well that I take care of most of the expenses for us. Plus, I help my kids' moms out a lot. I oh, don't cool. pay any child support, man. Uh, all the eight children that I have. So that says something to self. You live together now? Are you both yeah. on the lease? No, he's not. Okay. Yeah, no. Mr. Blunt? Yeah, no, I'm not on the lease, but, um, you know, if she wants me to leave, you know, if she doesn't want to be with me, you know, I respect that because we started before we started a relationship with friends. And I would rather have you as a friend than lose you all together. So, you know, if, if I have to do my part, pay the, out the rest of the time, sure, you know, I'm not going to block you or be funny about it when I see you, but, you know, I respect those wishes, man. <laughs>